three. What's going on you guys? So we are in SF right now, particularly at Mission Street. Now Mission Street is notorious for having a bunch of characters, a bunch of different colors, and overall just interesting scenes. And so I have the L35 AF with me right now, and I also have some Ilford HP5. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna load this up and try to shoot some street photography while also giving you guys you know, a little insight on the camera. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this loaded up and let's hit the streets. So one of the things that I'm doing is I'm pushing the HP5 up to 800. Now it only goes up to 1000, but I'm just gonna keep it at 800. And the purpose for that is so that I can shoot at a higher aperture. Aperture stays high, shutter speed is gonna vary in between. Uh, but you know, with a higher ISO, that aperture is gonna have to increase, especially because it's still sunny outside. Now on mission, you know, I thought there'd be like a lot more character and a lot more interesting subjects, but you know, it's very flat. Everything is just like two dimensional. It's literally just a street. And so I think me and Drew are gonna go out. We're gonna head somewhere else in SF and try to continue the rule. I have about, I think, 16, 36 minus 16, I don't know, 20 shots left, right? 20 shots left? I'm good at math. Um, and we're gonna try to get some more shots and get you some good images out of the L35. So let's just go ahead and see where else we transport to. <laughs>
All right, you guys, so we're back home with the Nikon L35 AF, and what I want to do really quick is just give you guys some of my first impressions on the camera, some strong points, some weak points, and overall just wrap it up with my conclusion on what I think of this little capable beast right here. Now, I want to start off by saying this camera has a ton of things you can love about it, but at the same time, there's an even equal amount of stuff that you can hate or you might need to consider about the camera before you pick one up. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with some of the strong points. The first thing that I really like about the camera is the size. As you guys see here, it's about the size of my hand, but I have pretty big beefy hands. Comparing it over to your chest, it's a perfect camera for travel, for travel photography, street photography, or anything like that. Um, if you want to have a camera that you can just throw in a pocket, a jagged pocket, or into your bag, something that's small portable but can still give you that serious image quality, this is the camera for you. Also, the L35 AF is mostly made out of plastic, but for some reason, there's a heft to it, and it's not, it doesn't feel cheap at all. It almost feels like a premium compact point issue camera, which I really like because it's the perfect medium between plastic and light, but also very durable and solid. Now, something that I really appreciate on this camera that Nikon did was they included an on-off switch at the very top, and it feels really solid, you know what I mean? So you flip it on, flip it off, it's pretty basic, but on a point and shoot camera um, in this range, you're not gonna see that on any of those like the Canon AF 35M it kind of just has it's always it's pretty much just always on so big props to Nikon for putting that design feature in there now one of the things that I really love about the L35 AF is that it takes double A batteries you can go to Walmart you can go to any store and pick up double A's for this camera and throw it in that's one of the big pluses to it also not mentioning the lens this camera has a 35 millimeter 2.8 lens the 2.8 is perfect for low light photography and it's super freaking sharp I mean, this camera produces some really, really sharp images for a point of shoot. Um, if you guys look here, there's gonna be a lot of coating on that lens and it's really beautiful. 35 millimeter is a really good focal length for everyday photography, whether it's street photography or you're taking photos of your kids or even family. So the 35 focal length is very useful and very versatile. On the L35 is that it has a screw filter right here. So you can go ahead and buy filters for this thing, whether it's yellow filters, red filters, whatever filter that you want, you can throw that on this guy. So there's endless possibilities to what you can create. So those right there are mostly all of the strong points that I found for the camera. Now I'm gonna give you guys some of the weak points over the L35 AF. Uh, there's not too many of them, but at the same time, you wanna keep these in the back of your head and you know consider them at least when you're going ahead and purchase one of these. The first one being the ISO. Now the ISO ranges all the way from 50 all the way up to 1000, but it maxes out at 1000. So any of those higher ISO films like, like 1600 ISO or the new T-Max 3200 or Delta 3200, you won't be able to shoot them in here unless you go ahead and overexpose it. So that kind of sucks, there's no DX coating, you really have to set it yourself right up at the front. Another thing about the L35 is that it is fairly loud and it has this really weird, I don't know why cameras back in this time, uh, they all pretty much did the same thing and it's like a two-step process. First, you focus, now it's pretty much of a sound, so listen up closely. The first step is the focus, so you're gonna hear that, that little, that's the focusing motor. And then after you take the shot, this is what it sounds like. So if you're doing street photography or if you're doing some candids and such like that, you know, this camera is gonna be pretty loud and there's a way around it. The first step is to focus in, go ahead and take your shot, and that's the shutter right there. The shutter itself is not too loud. The loudest part is the winding. But what you can do is like what I'm doing now is after you take the shot, hold down the shutter button and walk away from the scene and then advance the film by just letting go of the shutter button and that'll advance it forward. So the film advance is the loudest thing, the shutter itself is not the loudest, but once again, the way to get over that is to go ahead, focus, shoot, walk away, advance. And last but not least, the flash. Now the flash here is only activated automatically when the light meter doesn't read enough light. So for example, let's say you wanna get a shot of flash in mid daylight, you know, maybe you wanna go ahead and fill in some of those shadows or you wanna add contrast to your background and you wanna use the flash you can't really open up that flash there's no button to do so and so what you have to do is you have to trick the camera by going ahead putting your hand over the lens focusing it and then the camera will flash will go ahead and pop up so there's a little light here that will flash open uh, when it says that it's ready to go now the flash itself is pretty powerful let me show you guys it's a pretty powerful flash so there's nothing really wrong with it uh, but it's just a little extra step that you have to take by covering this up and doing that as well. And those are really the only three things that I feel like are you know, weak points on the camera, the ISO, the loudness of the camera, and then also the flash. But other than that, the L35 AF is a solid camera. I mean, 
it's a perfect travel companion. Uh, I'm definitely gonna keep this one in my collection and it's a small camera. It's a fairly small camera, I guess you could say, but it's one of the best competitors in the point of shoot market. If you're looking for a camera that can give you amazing image quality, corner to corner sharpness, but won't also put a hole in your pocket, definitely consider the Nikon L35 AF. I'm sure you can pick these up on eBay for around 50 to 100 bucks, depending on condition. Or if you can get lucky at a thrift store and you can find one of these, I highly recommend you guys pick it up. This camera right here is honestly, I think one of the best cameras in that 50 to 100 dollar price range for a point and shoot if you don't want to get this pick up the olympus infinity stylus or if you want a cheaper version of this guide check out the canon af 35m i'm planning to do a little comparison video between these two so if you guys want to see that drop a like on this video and comment down below so that's gonna wrap it up folks thank you guys for watching another king japes video you guys are amazing we hit 11,000 subscribers so i just want to say really quick thank you guys so much for the continued support for always commenting and, you know leaving feedback on the videos and it's super inspiring to see other people go out pick up film cameras and start shooting so i just want to say one more time thank you guys so much i love what we do here on the channel and honestly when i connect with the film community it just makes me feel much happier about why i do this and just keeps me motivated also if you guys want to pre-order one of the zines there's about I think five or ten left five to ten I don't remember uh, but go ahead and hit the pre-order link down in the description below alrighty folks so that's gonna wrap it up I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you guys have any comments questions or concerns about the L35 AF feel free to comment down below but that's gonna wrap it up folks thank you for watching another King J's video and as always Minolta gang Bye.